scoot up the PC, my heart's in a quake. Sweaty palms gripped in the mouse like a snake. Buttons mashed without a clue. In this pixel world, I'm gaming like a noob. Hello, and welcome to the channel Gaming Like a Noob. I'm the noob, and I call myself Sensomi. And if you subscribe to the channel, I say thank you very much. And if you're not, I say please do, it will help me out a lot. Now it's Tuesday, it's the Welling United save, and we're going to start this episode in the Premier League away against Leicester City. So let's jump into this one. And yeah, I've, um, before I go anywhere uh, further, uh, I'm recording this the day after that I learned that the Ten Hag has been fired from Manchester United. So, yeah, it's... Um, I am luckily a bit ahead when it comes to recording. What does that... that what makes that a bit sad is that when lives... when things happen, happens in real life, uh, I'm sort of way behind in in talking about it but uh yeah we'll talk more about it um once i get into the game let's see what we can use today before we and kick this game off before we talk more about the ten hag situation and stuff like that hmm i think we have what the thing that we want yeah i think i have the team that i want on the pitch they all look fresh. So let's see what we can do against Leicester away. They're sixth in the league. I can't really re remember where we were. 13 or something like that. Wasn't, weren't, weren't we? I think we were that. So let's see. Um, no, I'm not going to go hard in on tackles. I'm, I mean, maybe we do need it, but... Um, yeah, I'm not going to do it. So we here, skip that. And we are 13th, yes. Now, Ten Hag. Do I think that it's good or bad that he got the sack? Well, quite honestly, I don't feel myself being, being a, a person with enough knowledge to know if that was the right or wrong decision. I can remember back in the days when when Alex Ferguson had his I think it was his third season where he were down to 11th position or something like that and there were big 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 signs people were were screaming outside of oh look at that and then look at this oh people were screaming outside of Old Trafford and stuff to, to sack the manager and and yeah, they could have done that. Oscar Thorne! 1-0 for Welling! Thank you, Thorne. And as I said, they could have fired Ferguson right there. And it took him, I think, another three years before he won his first Premier League title. Or his first league title with United. Now he... He did win the FA Cup, he won the Cup Winners' Cup, so he did win something, but so did Ten Hag. He won the the Carabao Cup, he won the, the FA Cup, and uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't... The, the difference is that when Ferguson was manager, um, I've... I tried to watch every game I could, uh, which wasn't many, to be honest, but I did watch as much as I could, and I could see that he was, that they were playing good, they just lacking that winning mentality back in those days, and you could see, and I can't compare that to Ten Hag, because... I haven't watched much of the foot. I can't afford those channels, as I've told you before. So I haven't watched that uh, um, very much. I haven't really looked at a Manchester United game 
like that for a very long time. So I don't know if you could see some some plan in, in his way of playing or something like that. I don't know. Um, so all I can can re take as a, as a historical thing is that it took Ferguson from 1986 to 1992-93 season. He, he came to United in November 86, if I'm not remembering incorrect. Took over after Big Ron was fired. Ron Atkinson. And um, as I said, it wasn't until the season 92-93 he managed to win the league. And uh, then people say, well, Ten Hag took over a much better team than or much better players than, than Alex Ferguson took over. And to that I'll say bullshit. Quite honestly, I say bullshit. Because back in the 80s, uh, Manchester United was the richest club. They bought the players that they wanted. They did have the biggest names at their club, like Brian Robson, and, and players like that. Um, the only one they, they couldn't get away buying was the Liverpool players because they they were playing for their team, so to speak. But when someone came up uh, from any other team, most or most of the teams, United were there buying them up. So Ferguson did take over a, a better bunch of players, or at least as good a bunch of players, as Ten, Ten Hag took over. And he couldn't get it to work for six season. You could see a, a, a level of play, and they did play better and better. And eventually, Alex Ferguson were either lucky or very, very... Um, knowingly bought Cantona, which changed the history of Manchester United and changed the history for uh, for Ferguson. And I will say rest the rest is history there. So I don't know. Have they given up too soon on uh, Ten Hag? Or, uh, yeah, I don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see what the new manager will do. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just dreading going through Three new seasons with a manager that can't handle the players that they have at the club. Because I do think that there is there is something stirring in the dressing room. I think um, I think United would need a complete clear out. Um, yeah, that's just what I feel. I, I don't know, but. Uh, it feels like it when when they talk in the media and stuff like that. Pretty much that there are something undergrowing, some some weird things are going on underneath the surface. Oh, Bonifaci is very tired as well. So let's put in Jackson Jones. You can see that we are struggling here now. Can we? No, we can't find a room for him, but we can put in Steve Clay there on front and hope that that's good enough. I'm sorry for talking about Manchester United that long and that much. Uh, this is a Welling United save, but uh, as you all know, I am a Manchester United fan, so yeah. Anyway, let's get on with this game. Um, oh, let's look at this. Jackson Jones. Oh, come on. He could have sealed the game there. Too bad he couldn't put that in. That would have been something great. And uh, I do believe that we have something big growing here with Welling. I mean, this... Taking the lead and keeping the lead as long as we've done here against... Leicester, even if we do lose it here at, at the last couple of minutes, uh, which I hope we don't, but even if we will do that, I think we have done a very good game, keeping it 1-0 in the 
87th minute. And here's Oscar Thorne. And ooh, he hits the post there. That was certainly something. So we've had a lead now for over 80 minutes. Please don't let a goal in here now. His Peda, Clay, Steve Clay, Jermaine, J Jones, Jim, Jermaine? No, Jackson Jones. Sorry about that. Oh, you get that one. Yeah, Pena, 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 Pena. Grant, Jones, Pena, Clay. Clay gets it into Fawn. Oh, 2 0. I guess we're getting a three pointer against Leicester here today. Thank oh, VRR's going to have a check, but uh, he looked uh, on sign. I've been disallowed for what? Was it offside? Yeah, Thorn was offside. I need to see that. All right, they don't show the replay. Thank you very much. Dang it. Oh, there's still one and a half minutes left. Pena. Very good, Pena. He hasn't played well, but the, the things that they've shown in the highlights has been really good. So that's weird, but his average rating is 6.4, and here they come and score the equalizer. 93rd minute. There was less than a minute left to play, and they get an equalizer. Well, and that just my luck. Oh, we went from three point to one point. Well, at least we get, did get a point. And as I said at the end of the game there, uh, I would still be happy with the performance that the players have made here to keep it up this late. So we're just going to have to be satisfied with this 1-1 one, one draw. Um, oh, I haven't seen this before. Honestly, I missed this. Body language it doesn't seem to say anything. Well, maybe that's out. No. Well, basic info is enough for me. A goal from Oscar Thorne, assist from Erasti. So, uh, yeah, 1-1. One, one. And I guess I'll just see you in the next game. And so we're here, second game of this episode, Norwich at home. Now, Norwich is thick in the league, so, uh, but we are 14. That draw made us fall one position. Let's see if we can use, or what kind of players we can use. We should be able to use the exact same team, actually. They seem to have recovered. Um... Morale is quite good. Not as good as I'd hoped for, but uh, all right. Uh, Message has played for on the 23 in the week here now, so uh, he's a little bit tired, but we don't have any choice. We need to have him play, so we're going to have him play. So we're going to play with the exact same, exact same team and see what we can do today. Um, going to be interesting. I think we did a very good game against Leicester. Um, I did talk away about Manchester United too much in that game, I think. But hey, that's the way it is when you're a Man United supporter and something big like that happens. I think we're going to go for huge underdogs. I think that... Um, went good in the previous game so uh, let's see what we can do today Pena is a bit tired and Tanju Zedjin I didn't see that when I saw the lineup they looked fine to me there but all right here we go corner for us Martin Turney and it's headed away Turney gets it in again and back oh Novak Gets it out to Tony to Lukic, but he looked offside. Defenders are appealing for an offside. Let's see what the referee says. I guess it's going to be a VRR check, yes. And it will say awarded! 
It's awarded. It's 1-0 for Welling United. Home to Norwich. <clears throat> That's brilliant. I'm very happy about that. We take the lead again. This time after 10 minutes. Last game, it was after 5 minutes. Bonifaci, Lukic, Novak. Oh, Thorne was in there, but uh, no luck there. He was closed down quite easily. Here comes Norwich. Ah, good interception there. Lukic, long ball to Thorne. Thorne is free. And he puts it in. It's 2-0 for Welling United. Both my strikers has hit goal today. One goal each. I'm very happy about that. And what a pass from Lukic. Ah, and a good finish from Thorne. 2-0. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That is brilliant. Every point we can get to stay out of relegation zone is a tremendous thing. And will make me uh, very happy. But, um, yeah, it's only in the start of the game, so we need to keep clean... Keep it clean at the back now. Come on. I think we're going to shout for them to focus here now. Because it's going to be very important to focus here. Not get carried away by the lead that... Oh, good one. Tanju Sanju. But unfortunately it went to a Norwich player. And they shoot. And a good save by Harkin. Shush corner for them though and it's headed away thank you that's your ball Lukic yeah good turning there as well the defense ah oh, come on that was a little worse ah oh, come on Rasati to Novak to Rodwell Grant and uh, ball to no one 25 minutes 2-0 for Welling United which at the moment puts us 11th in the league. We have surpassed Everton, Brighton and Wolves. Interesting. Everton is very, very interesting to have surpassed. They've been fighting for those European Cup titles. Or those European Cup places in the league for many years. Oh, there it comes. There it comes. They bring one back. Dang it. Oh, who's number 20? Who is... Is that Brion? Yeah. Brion, you should have marked him tighter. Dang it. We do not need things like that. Come on. What's going on? Cancel. Shoot map. Already scored once. Yep. Oh well. Welling to Norwich one. Ah. Uh, can I pump my fist and say it? No, I'm gonna do like this. Still room for improvement. Wasn't a very good half to a half half time talk. It looked like so. Um, yeah. But let's hope it was good enough. But we're going to have to do a couple of changes today as well. I can see a lot of tired players. We're going to start doing it now. Jackson Jones coming in today as well. Tanju. And we're going to bring in Steve Clay as well. Penner. Oh, come on. Here comes Norwich. Oh, this isn't looking good. Oh, good one, Jones. Lukic. Oh, that was a bad pass. A really bad pass. And a good save, though. Oh, Lukic, that pass was not good at all. Um, I think it might be good that Steve Clay comes in. Let's hope that. And uh, we played 70 minutes now. I'm going to shout for them to focus.
because they really need to stay focused now. There are 15 minutes left to play. We are 2-1 up. We have a free kick here. Jackson Jones. Oh! Whoa! Rodwell Grant. So close of scoring. Dang it. Oh, that was a bit dangerous. Steve Clay. Come on, Clay. Gets it to Penna. Penna. Yeah, come on. Oh! Juan Carlos Pena! 3 1. Phew. Now I do so much work outside of, of recording and playing, uh, looking for players, and it really pays off sometimes, like Pena here now. Brions has been another one that has been. Hmm, Kind of good, it looks like, and might be uh, a success later on. Oof. Especially looking at the, the star rating and stuff like that. So, here's another one, Steve Clay, which I found in Australia, of all places. So, I often go back down to, I think it was uh, some academy uh, place in... Um... Let's have a look. No. A message. Novak message. Eredati. So I'm constantly searching between games. I'm 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 jumping into a team or another, and I look at their hot prospects and stuff like that. Try to scout them, and uh, if I can't scout them, I'm hoping that I can at least see that he has uh, some high determination. And being their hot prospect. And I think, well, maybe that should be enough for him to be a good player. I can't do what I did the first couple of seasons, where every single Premier League player that, pretty much I should say, at least from the big teams like United, Liverpool, Chelsea, Arsenal, Tottenham, and all of those, when they released players, I tried to sign them on free transfers and uh, that uh, was a good that worked good for me I should say the, f the first couple of years but the higher up we did come because not every one of them become stars of course far from it but uh, we do know that some of them become stars so yeah there's Thorn oh I wonder if Thorn didn't start his career in Norwich I have a slight little feeling that that is what it's been. But I'm going to have a look later on. Oh, come on. And the game is almost over here. Tony. And oh, good one. Come on, run for it, Thorn. You need to fight for us to not let goals in. And that's Harkins ball. Thank you. And we do another good game here, and a win against Norwich, which is um, very, very good. I know, there's still some time to play, but um, they're not going to score twice. They should be very lucky to score once, uh, with only 10 seconds left of the game. So, yeah. Oh, there we go. A win with 3-1. And now, let's have a look. Where did Oscar Thorne start his... Yep, I was right. He started his career in Norwich. We got him for free. He went to Burnley for 400000 With Those 400000 is part of the reason we are where we are. Because I think that was one of the first players that I really got some good money for. Which made us... We made it possible for us to invest in the um, training facilities and to uh, do stuff like that so that was gold worth and then he was just away for three seasons and then he signed on a free transfer again for us which was of course a uh, an incredible thing and now he's been here uh, this is his fifth season back in welling united and he's doing very good 
um, not as good as he has done the years before here, I can see. He's having a middle season so far, but maybe he'll get better the further the season goes. Um, and then it was the club where we found Steve Clay. Let's have a look at that. Um, yeah. Canberra United Academy is where I found him. And um, I think it it was in Australia I found... No. No. Because I the, the, it's the, in the Manchester United, say, where I found Adam Ferguson. I think it was in Australia, but I think it was in Melbourne or something that I found him. Anyway, look at that. 20 shots, 8 on target, compared to our 9 shots with 5 on target. And we win the game 3-1. And possession, 56-44. So they were, in those numbers, the better team than us. So, uh, yeah. Interesting. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'll just see you in the next and last game of this episode. And so we hear last game of this episode, away to Burnley, one of the games that we need to win. They are in the bottom here. And the first game in the next episode will be against Sheffield United. So, And we're going to have to play away against both of them. So two bad wrestles in a row here now can really put us down to, um, yeah, fight for relegation. But, uh, yeah. We could also end up with good wrestles here, which is what I'm hoping for. But we do have some tired players, and we all have Brion's injured as well. So we're going to have to play De Rosa uh, on the left. Cameron McAllister, who, was, who played very many games last season and played very well, haven't really been able to fight his way in for the team this yeah, but um, yeah, and we're going to have to do a couple of changes in the midfield as well, which isn't good. Turney should be rested as well, but I don't have any left. Oh, I do. I do have a left. I have Jake Fisher, but is he good enough to play? Let's take him up there and let's have a look. We do want at least have we do want him on the bench, but who do we take away? We can't take away any of these. We could take away Charlie Wiggett. Hmm. And we could give Nezid the opportunity. Let's do this. Because we do need Jake Fisher to take that position. Um, right now, anyway. Um, I think there's a big chance that Jones, Turney, Clay will be the three players to be substituted in at half time so uh, i think edwards is going to be a really weak point i think jake fisher is going to be a weak point maybe even de rosa i do believe i have some high potential on that lad um but uh, he's nowhere near that now we do need him to develop though in order for him to, to become that great player that he has the potential to become so and then he needs to play some games from time to time. Now, we do not have the luxury of being the team that I play with Manchester United in my saves on Thursdays. Do check that out. Uh, where I can put in youngsters, even in tough games, because I do have such a high amount of good players that they... Uh, that I can give you young players the opportunity to develop and come into games, especially games like this, where Manchester, where I, my Manchester United team would, of course, be huge favourites. Here we are not. We it's pretty even. Before even if I play with my very best players, and here they come and makes it one nil. Not good. That's not good at all. Dang it. 
I mean, playing so good against both Leicester and Norwich gave me the hope that maybe, maybe, maybe we are closer than we believe to being able to qualify for something out in Europe. And this just proves that maybe we aren't. Maybe we are quite a, a bit off still. Quite a far bit off, to be honest. Because if we're going to play in Europe, we need players. Oh, here's Lukic. Whoa! We need a, a high amount of good players so that we can rotate a lot. And this just proves that when we try to rotate, even against the teams that we are supposed to win against, we can't we can't win because we the reserve players or the players that we bring in in these games are um, not good enough to oh to be close to the bottom teams of the league. So yeah. But we're going to keep on fighting in this game. And I think we're going to do all three changes at half time. And uh, hope for the best. McAllister. Rodwell Grant. Nezid. Message. Is Fisher. Can he? No. He could not. So Tony is definitely coming in for Fisher in the second half. Lukic. Lukic. Come on, get the ball in there. He gets it in there, and there it's Fisher. Oh, come on! Here comes Burnley. No, Burnley. Keep the ball here. Feels like a good opportunity for them, but we do intercept there. Here's come, here come Lukic, Oscar Thorn. When he fast, he was. Oh, what a! That was a curl on that ball. A nice curl on that ball. Marvellous. That was cool to see. Anyway, come on, Welling. Welling, we have a free kick here. Message now. Here comes Burnley on a counter attack. Come on, you can do this. Get the ball from them. Come on. Oh no. Oh, Harkin. Good one. Long ball from Harkin. That didn't reach its destination. Um, yeah, we... we um, there will be some changes. Oh, what a goal! What a goal! Hmm. And it's 2 0 for Burnley. I think it's too late for us to do anything about it. But uh, we are going to try. I don't think there will be any time for um, Steve Clay to play today. I think I will do all my substitutions in the midfield. Because I feel that that's where we are lacking. Uh, message needs to play in another position the more defensive position is what i think and ronnie edwards needs to come off um, fisher needs to come off and uh, then we have the tired bonifasi that might also oh he scores he brings us back maybe i'll let him stay for a short while in the second half before I change him for Jones but um, yeah Oof, come on we need to pull this back and uh, I'm just waiting for half time now I'm going to go into the tactics and do a couple of changes and uh, yeah let's go into tactics here now what we want is Edwards out Sengen in, and I want to change position on those two. Jake Fisher out, Tony in, and uh, Bonifaci is tired, but I think I'll let him play for, for in the start of the second half and try to hope for the best there. 
Let's go to the dressing room. Let's, um, I'm just going to tell them to show me something else in the second half. And the second half is away. Tanju Senjin and Martin Turney comes in. Can they help us turn this game around? Here comes Burnley. Come on, don't let them into the game here. Van Neffy. Van Neff. McAllister. McAllister gets it up to Bonifasi. Now, I don't know how to play. Bonifasi gets it to Lukic. Lukic equalizes! I don't know what type of pl what players I should use against Sheffield United. Uh, because the game after that is the quarterfinal in the Carabao Cup against Manchester United. And, um, yeah, I would really love to have my very best team at a very... As, as rested as possible. Is that the way I should say it? My very best team rest as good rested as possible so that they don't... Um, so that we at least stand a small chance of beating out Manchester United in the Carabao Cup. It would be lovely to go to the semi-finals. I think it's time for Bonifaci to unfortunately have to leave the pitch. He's really, really tired. Burnley. Ooh. Holy smokes. I can't do anything more now. We've done all our three changes. Here comes... Burnley, oh, lucky us there. At the moment, I feel that maybe we do need to be, we need to feel lucky if we can get away with a draw here. We would love to win, of course, always want to win. But um, I feel like Burnley has been playing good and um, has created more chances than us. And our players are so very tired at the moment. So, um, I am going to be not thrilled, but uh, honestly pleased with our 2 2 draw if we can get that. Now, of course, three points is always what we are struggling for or want to have. De Rossia, Lukic. Come on, Lukic. Lukic is very tired. I wish I could bring in Steve Clay here at the end of it, but. Uh, and Oscar Thorne! We have turned it around! We have turned it around! 3-2 for Welling. Hoo-ha! Thank you, Thorne. Turney just headed that down to Thorne and he puts it away. And 3-2. Can we take all three points here today? Now, wouldn't that be lovely? I think it would be lovely, though. So, uh, let's hope for this. Three points today. Only four points. In that case, we would only be four points away from our European competition position. And Oh, look at that! Rodwell Grant, 4-2 to Welling. But it's going to be a VRR check. Come on. Award it, please. And the decision is... Mm, come on. Disallowed. Dang it. <sighs> pushes another player, all right. I don't know who pushes, pushed, but all right. Hold on, hold on. Can I shout focus before they create an opportunity here? Five minutes of added time. One minute left. Come on, let's end this with a win. Yes! We end this episode with a win. Bl blimey, wonderful. Hoo-ha! I guess the changes played their part. So, I guess I'm supposed to take a bit of the honor for us winning that last game of this episode.
Ah, oh, tenth in the league. We do have a slight chance to fight ourselves up to fight for a European competition place. That would be just, just marvelous. Now I don't believe we are going to do that because we don't have the players to put in when we get somebody injured or uh, suspended. We don't really have anybody to fill out those position. So, uh, yeah, that's going to make it hard for us to... And yeah, McAllister gets injured, but I guess he will be back against Sheffield United. Um, and Tenju Sanji needs to be rested. But I think we have an entire week now until the next game. That's good. But then I think we have only two, three days for the game after that. But let's start with the finances. We are under 100 million again. We have lost half one and a half million pounds this uh month i do not know why really transfer we paid 1.6 for transfer this month hmm. all right and we haven't had very big money no tv money ah it's only the 6th of december uh, i think we're gonna be doing something good later on um but yeah, I guess that's some some clause that we're still paying for uh, when it comes to the to that thing. Uh, Expanders Stadium is um, well planned to be built and should be finished in November next season, which is going to be interesting because we're going to be. Uh, we're going to have 18,000, almost 18,000, 70,000 something. And when that is done, uh, training facility is being improved as well, which be com will be completed uh, 4th of January. Um, so that's pretty close. And um, yeah, close and interesting to see um, what that will, will, um, will say about our... Uh, Training facilities. Captain Charlie Wiggett, I think it's time maybe we did something about that. He does he doesn't play at the moment. Martin Turney as the vice captain. Andre Lukic is a key player. Hot prospect Schwantino de Rosa. And uh yeah. Let's see, uh, the facilities, that's what I was talking about. We have superb training facilities now. Getting them even better would be nice. History summary, that's just how we have climbed through the years here. We have Vanarama National South, but there's an R there. Oh, whatever. Does it say anything? Yeah, the Western Panorama National League South, so yeah. And then we go, went up to the north here, and then League Two, League One Championship. We only stayed one season in the championship, which um, now that I, I, I feel that we, we can sustain ourselves in this league, I feel that we have... Um, it was the right uh, mistake, I should say, to go up to the Premier League because we are making so much money now that if I can continue to stay here, we are going to grow and become better and better. And, uh, yeah. Not much hist history before. It's only founded in 1963. And uh, pretty much everything else... Um, in the history books here is since I took over. So, um, that's interesting. Now, it would be nice if uh, you could play around with these, um, to be honest. Uh, maybe even just tell the club that we need to, we need to develop a new kit and uh, maybe we'll get new colors on the away kit we always keep the same colors on the home kit but maybe get another design some 
some uh, sponsorship on the shirt and stuff like that. I would, I think that would be nice. It doesn't really have to be some, some real um, business. Uh, I think that the the name of the players are. Um, I'm happy that those are the real names, but when it comes to companies on the shirts, I really don't. I really don't care that it if it's instead of saying let's say sharp it said sharpie or something uh, and instead of um should we say samsung it said pang some or pang pong or something like that just change it around a bit if if you're afraid of getting sued by the companies and then you should be able to just, oh, we'll pick that. Um, and, um, yeah. Because the thing is that after 10 years, especially the road that we have taken from way down in Vanarama National League South all the way up to the Premier League and are starting to build up a team that might be getting closer and closer to that European spot, we should have completely different commercial on our shirts of course so it, I, I don't say that it's something that you as a manager should be involved in picking it's just that it would be nice when you get a new contract did a little ceremony and they show off a new shirt same colors but a new shirt with a new sponsoring deal on the shirt i mean just like uh, maybe they'll keep the red like this and then draw a line here and everything on this side here or this shoulder here would be white and the rest of the shirt will be red and then the new logo and, and another season you do something else so you just tweak it a bit um, and give it some new things i think that would be cool but uh, yeah that's, maybe that's just me. Uh, we are 10th in the league. Four points behind Leicester, City, Southampton and Norwich, uh, who are all competing for that European competition position. Now, Manchester United is not having the best of season so far. Only fifth position at the moment. And we are pretty clear away from Burnley in the relegation zone with 12 points ahead of them. So, yeah, that feels quite good. That's four, four um, losses while they are going to win four games to even get equal on the points. So, yeah. Now, we have played today. We have played Leicester, Norwich and Burnley, all league games. <clears throat> Next episode will be Sheffield United, Manchester United in the Carabao Cup quarterfinal away and then Liverpool at home in the league. So, um, yeah, lots to look forward for the next episode. The medical we have current in injuries is uh, McAllister, but he's only out for one to two days. So that should be OK. Uh, training, just 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 let's let's just have a look at this. Many players are training very well, so uh, yeah. Nesid though is not training very well, so that would be a twenty-year-old wonder kid, um, and he did get some playtime this week, so that's not good. And uh, yeah, not much more to say. Seven days, as I said, until we're going to face off against Sheffield United, who are seventeenth in the league. And that will be an interesting game. And uh, having said that, I'll just say I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Do like, subscribe, leave a little comment down below, and don't forget to share with your friends. Now, I hope that you stay safe out there, that you have tons of fun, and I'll just end with bye-bye-bye-bye. Put up that PC, my heart's in a quake
Sweaty palms gripping the mouse like a snake Buttons mashed without a clue In this pixel world I'm gaming like a noob Start again, not feeling any shame 